Congratulations on completing the exercise. In this final video and task, I am going to introduce you to another type of variable we can use in our programs, a list. And I am also going to introduce for loops and explain how we can use these structures to make our program shorter. Before we get on to that, however, let's first briefly review what we have covered in the other parts of this lesson. In the previous exercises and videos, I have introduced the three key programming concepts that are at the heart of any computer program. I have discussed how we can use variables to label addresses in memory. I have also discussed how these variables have a state, how we can store the value of some quantity in this state, and how by using the label of the variable, we can recover these stored values. I then discussed functions and explained how functions provide us with the tools that we need in order to change the states of variables. Lastly, I introduced logic operations and showed how we can use if statements to make the behaviour of our program dependent on the state of the variables. To ensure that you understood how to use these three concepts in tandem, I then got you to write a program to generate Bernoulli random variables. To do this, you had to generate a random variable between 0 and 1 by calling an intrinsic function. You then had to set the state of a second variable by using an if-else statement that took as its input the random variable you generated using the intrinsic function. I want to make clear at this stage that these three ideas, variables, functions and logic, lie underneath everything that we will do with our computer programs. In other words, we could do all of the exercises in the remainder of this course by just using the programming that you've learnt thus far. The programs that you would write in this way, however, would be very long and difficult to maintain. The rest of the ideas that we are going to introduce in these videos and exercises are thus simply ways to reduce the length of the pieces of code that we write. In other words, Everything that we are introducing from now on is essentially a shortcut to something that we could do with a piece of much longer code. As a case in point, consider the familiar script at the top of this page. As you now know, this set of commands will generate a uniform random variable between 0 and 1. Now suppose that we want to generate multiple random variables. To do this, we obviously need to repeat the second of these two commands multiple times. Using what we have learnt thus far, we could do this as shown here. We could simply copy and paste our command to generate a random variable multiple times and change the name of the variable that we are setting each time. This way of doing things is fine if we are generating a sample of six random variables as we are doing here. If we are generating 60,000 random variables, however, it would be bad to do it this way as it would involve writing 60,000 lines of computer code. We can, however, avoid all this by exploiting a new type of variable called a list and a new type of programming structure called a loop, as shown in this piece of code. The first line of this code creates a list called A. A list is, as you might expect, an object that can store the values of multiple quantities. In what we have seen thus far, all the variables we have used can only store a single number in their state. A list, however, can be used to store multiple values, so the first line in this piece of code creates a list containing six elements that are all initially set equal to zero. The next command, shown here, tells Python that the indented code beneath it is to be repeated six times. The code and the code below thus generates our six random variables. Notice, furthermore, the structure of the for loop command. What is written is for i in range 6. Range 6 is Python's way of talking about the list 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, i.e. all the not negative integers that are less than 6. The command below is thus executed for i equals to 0 when the program goes through the indented code for the first time, for i equals to 1 when the program goes through the indented code for the second time, for i equals 2 when the program goes through the indented code for the third time, 
and so on. This setting of the variable i is useful as we can use the syntax shown here to reference the various elements of our list sequentially. The first time we go through the loop, we thus set the first element of the list equal to the random number generated. The second time we go through the loop, we set the second element of the list equal to the random number that was generated, and so on. It gets better still though. Suppose we now want to plot the sample of data points that we generated. The input to the matplotlib pyplot.plot command that we have been using to plot our data points are actually lists. In other words, the first thing we pass to this function is a list of x values, while the second is a list of y values. As you can see here, we can thus pass the list that was generated using the code in the top left command directly to the matplotlib.pyplot.plot command and can thus have the y coordinates of each of our data points set equal to the values of the various random variables that we generated. In fact, we have been passing list to plot every time that we have used this command in these videos, as in Python we can set all the values in a list in one go by using a single set of comma separated numbers in square brackets. In the command shown here, we are thus setting the x coordinates of the six data points we are plotting equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, respectively. Furthermore, if you remember, whenever we have used matplotlib.pyplot.plot in these other videos, we have always had one number or variable inside a set of square brackets, which is how we create a list with only one element in Python. Hopefully, this business of lists and loops is relatively straightforward to understand. Furthermore, any confusion that you might have at this stage will hopefully disappear as you attempt to block the exercise that follows this video. Before getting onto that task, however, it is important to note that there are some small differences between the way Blockly and Python deals with lists. You are thus going to have to think carefully as you attempt to complete the exercise. In particular, you do not have access to the loop variable, which is the variable i for the loop shown here in Blockly. So we will have to work out how to use the blocks to create a variable that is equal to 1 the first time you go through the loop, 2 the second time you go through the loop, and so on. To help you with this, let's thus briefly summarise the contents of this video before letting you loose on the exercise. What we have seen is that we can use a for loop to repeat a command or command mul commands multiple times in our computer programs. Furthermore, we have seen how we can set a variable equal to a list of values, how these lists of values can be passed to functions, and how we can reference particular elements in the list by using an integer inside a square bracket. With all these pieces in place, we can now start to build code to sample random variables from a distribution. In the exercise, this is exactly what you are going to do. You are going to create a sample of Bernoulli random variables. This task should consolidate everything that we have done in this whole exercise and that has been covered in these videos. Good luck.